The pick is in. Joe Biden has named Kamala Harris as his running mate in the race to the White House. You make a lot of important decisions as president, but the first one is who you select to be your vice president. I've decided that Kamala Harris is the best person to help me take this fight to Donald Trump and Mike Pence and then to lead this nation starting in January 2021. The nomination of the 55-year-old senator from California completes the lineup of Democratic and Republican competitors for the presidential race. Both sides agree on the need for a large infrastructure spending plan and reining in the trade deficit. But they have different ideas on other major economic policies. The Republicans plan to maintain Trump's signature economic initiative. They want to extend massive tax cuts for middle-income Americans, which would expire in 2025, and repeal tax credits on renewable energy. By comparison, Harris has, like Biden, called for a repeal of Trump's tax cuts. She's called for an increase of the top income and corporate income tax rates. Biden and Harris also suggest a doubling income tax on foreign subsidiaries of U.S. firms to 21 percent. On health care, Trump plans to cut Medicaid by $900 billion over the next 10 years and Medicare by $450 billion. The Democrats have pledged the contrary, proposing to raise health care spending by $750 billion over the same period. They want to lower the age of Medicare eligibility and cut the cost of coverage. Regarding the climate crisis, Trump has repeatedly said he doesn't believe in climate change and has pulled out of the Paris Accord. Kamala Harris supports a return to the Paris Climate Accord and says any infrastructure plan should target making the U.S. carbon neutral in coming years. President Trump is not a fan of her economic views. She's very big into raising taxes. She wants to slash funds for our military at a level that nobody can even believe. She uh, is against fracking. Fracking is... she's against petroleum products. Most voters usually focus on the presidential candidate and not on the second person on the ticket. But Harris could help motivate an important part of the Democratic Party's base, African Americans. I think it's great news. I think it's long overdue um, for us to have a black woman, a minority woman, uh, be vice president. And I think, you know, politically, she brings great strength. Obviously, being a senator from California, she'll help bring that vote in. The vice presidential pick is important for another reason this year. Should Biden defeat Trump in November, he'll be the oldest person ever to be elected U.S. president at the age of 78. And if he plans to serve just one four-year term, it'll leave his VP teed up for the highest office. Sibel Karkush, TRT World. For more on this, Catherine Solon joins us now from Arizona. She's been elected a member of the Democratic National Committee to represent Democrats abroad. Welcome to Money Talks, Catherine. Now, it's hard to believe, isn't it, that it's taken this long for a woman of colour to be chosen as a presidential running mate. But what do you think of Joe Biden's pick? How will Kamala Harris help him defeat Donald Trump at the election in November? Well, this is an historic and a thrilling day for Democrats all around the world, as well as in the United States. Um, Joe Biden made a wonderful choice with Kamala Harris. She is going to help him win the election. She's going to help us win back the Senate. And then she's completely prepared to help him govern, govern as a true partner to dig us out of the hole that we've been digging ourselves into in the, in, during the Trump administration. So how is she going to help him win? She's the first black American woman on the ticket. So first woman that would serve as vice president, first black person who would serve as vice president, first Asian American. She's going to bring out all of those communities and many, many more that are concerned about the situation in our country now. She's a proven campaigner. Um, so she has the strength, the empathy, and the experience to both campaign, win this election, and then help govern. Now, with millions of Americans out of work because of the pandemic and uh, the U.S. economy in a, a very deep recession right now, no doubt Kamala Harris will help Joe Biden shape the Democrats' economic policies ahead of the election. Uh, but what sort of initiatives do you think she'll suggest? Uh, what are her key economic platforms? 
Well, I, I mean, I think you pointed out in your bullet points earlier some of the key differences that um, Joe Biden has come out with build back a Medi build back better plan for recovery for American families, and Kamala Harris will definitely be completely on board with that plan. The uh, foundation of that plan, of course, is to deal with the COVID crisis. That um, we cannot bring back the economy or work on the economy without getting control of that crisis in our country. And as you all know, the U.S. has not been handling this crisis well. We have an uneven leadership uh, on the national level that has put us in such a bad place that it's, it's really hard to, you know, to talk about the economy without talking about that first. But the plan that Joe Biden is putting out there and that Kamala Harris will support with him is to um, deal with the pandemic, look at job creation, uh, make sure that state, local, and tribal governments have funds that they need for essential workers, for educators, for firefighters. Extend the unemployment benefit, which expired 10 days ago, uh, and which has put uh, working Americans and working Americans that are now out of jobs in a terrible situation, you know, really uh, unable to survive. Um, and then there's a certain... Um, uh, provisions in there to make sure that we can bring back small businesses and entrepreneurs. Uh, your bullet points pointed, to, uh, uh, pointed out the differences between Republicans and Democrats on taxes. I'm certain that this administration, this Democratic administration, will be rolling back those tax cuts for the rich and come up with a much more fair tax policy that will ensure the U.S. government has enough funds to do the work that we need to do across the country. Now, Joe Biden, as we know, is seen as moderate, and so is Kamala Harris in a way. But we also know mm -hmm. there is this huge groundswell of more progressive and left-leaning support. Uh, a lot of people wanted Bernie Sanders to lead the Democrats into the next election. We have Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez uh, wielding popular support within the Democratic Party. Do you think those more progressive supporters will also vote for a Biden-Harris ticket? Yeah, of course they will. I mean, uh, the progressives will be very happy with this ticket. If you look at Kamala Harris's uh, record in the Senate, it is very similar to Bernie Sanders. I heard an interview on the radio yesterday with a public defender who would have been opposing the prosecutor, Kamala Harris, in California court. And she termed her as um, the most progressive attorney general and district attorney that she ever came up against. Um, Democrats abroad, my party, which represents the 9 million Americans overseas, is a very progressive party. We voted overwhelmingly for Bernie Sanders again in 2020. We did in 2016. And Democrats abroad is thrilled to be supporting Kamala Harris and Joe Biden. We, this, our party is united. We know that everything is at stake here. It's not just this election. It really is the survival and the soul of our nation. And we will come together to support this ticket. We are coming together already. Okay, Catherine Salon from the Democratic National Committee and Democrats Abroad, thank you again for joining us on the program. Awesome.